Okay, so just to start this off, I want to say, looking back on our first ever podcast episode last month, right? I think we did a lot of things right. Okay. Okay. I think we I think we did a lot of things right, and I and I guess I thought that it would be smart to try to instill some sort of consistency in the structure and the people and everything. So like it's like if you have a good product, you, you do it. Well, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I'll tell you what though. We have done completely different in here. <laughs> yeah, this is between this is, episode one and episode two. We have two extra people. Yep. We've got a whole different camera setup. Yep. I've got a, I've got a, a shot up the of the, up thigh. the of the of the sweet thigh down here thigh meat. We've got yep. the windows closed. <laughs> That's right. It's it's like if 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 last month's first episode podcast was was good, we are really risking it here, in my opinion. Like we could be doing a lot of things wrong. Hey, risk it for the biscuit. I'm wearing shades. I don't know why. Well, ring light. Um, yeah, the ring light is bright. Um, but anyways, okay. So also, we're just. If anything, Cody and I should be wearing shades because we're just so blinded by your star power. Right. That's now. true. That's true. You're you, shining bright, it, man. You really took off after that first episode, and we're just trying to keep up. I appreciate that. So, real story about the shades, though. My eyes are like very stingy and bloodshot right now, why and I that? didn't know how that'd show up on the camera because. Allergies. Okay, I need and, to clarify that. <laughs> that's, the, um, that's the answer for the record. So I've and, and, and actually not even really allergies, but lack of sleep due to side effects of the medicine I took for my allergies. Okay. Um, Zyrtec sucks, by the way. Zyrtec is awful. Um, I will say that to all the public. Zyrtec is awful. Um, it is the reason why I have uh, I have not slept in the last two nights. I'm a Zizol guy. I feel like it's, as a law enforcement officer, I, I have a few questions for you oh here we go oh see <laughs> okay it all. Oh, yeah okay well i have a okay david first Hold of before all we go any further. Okay. <laughs> hey let's welcome david presley to the all podcast right, everybody yeah. david by the way going two feet straight into the podcast yeah. coming at me like that. <laughs> just, just coming out swiping he's like you're not arrested but you're detained i have a few questions yeah, right, right. <laughs> right. I, I can't go anywhere so <laughs> yeah I, I, we'll, we'll talk I have off a few camera. questions for you too david but go ahead no uh, we'll, we'll talk off camera okay, okay. yeah well not well i'm not gonna i'm gonna come right at you with my questions go ahead. then so david um, first of all, I'm, I'm a little bit sour with you right now. Okay. Oh, here we so go. David has <laughs> recently, new. David has recently moved into, uh, the house that is one house across the street from me and one, and, and one down. It's like diagonal to my house. Um, oh, that's true. yeah. And you, I mean, how long have you lived in that house? Since October. Since October. Yeah. So <laughs> four or five months. Yeah. Today was the first time I'd seen David at his house. Well, today. In all He's fairness, grass. in all fairness, back to the law enforcement thing. Yep, I just got on day shift. How congratulations! Thank you. Yeah. So uh, that's a big is well, that's a big shift, isn't it? Welcome but, to the light, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the whole reason to mention that is, I used to be sleeping when you're right. Whatever you do, right. Yeah, right. I mean, today you were just like walking around the yard. I don't, I don't know what you were doing. Right. I, yeah, I, I was, I was walking to get my mail. Okay. Usually, if yeah. I see Jay, he's posted up in an Adirondack chair, having a beer in his front yard. I, I love to do that. You do. <laughs> I do love to do that. I like to sit out there, especially today was a beautiful day for Bluff it. Park yeah. I actually, I, you know, we had a uh, today, today at, at my job, it was, it was like the, the spring, like bonus day. So every like got their annual bonus, which is wonderful. But because of that, it was also like, like after lunch, everybody kind of like starts chilling out for the day and like gets, you know, goes and celebrates the bonus day. So I was in the auto round net chair this, this afternoon. I was taking a, uh, uh, trying to take a snooze. Um, but yeah, today was the first time I saw David out in his yard. Well, yeah, th well, that, that is true. And, you know, it's been winter. Mm -hmm. We would so, also like to take a second to realize that the only reason David is even eligible to be on this podcast is because he's a new dad. That is true. That's right. So, As of October, no, November, sorry. So, so you, <laughs> My wife tells me our, our daughter is four months old. Well, so you, you just got caught up from going to, to night shift to day shift getting caught up on sleep and then you decided, Hey, this is working out too well. Let's throw a baby in the mix. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, well, and we moved, you know, moved, had a baby. Right. Uh, changed moved, schedules. Be, moved because of the baby too. Right. Was that kind of, was the, was, was the fact that you were expecting a baby, a, a catalyst for the move? Uh, maybe in like, you know, years down the road for schools, but not for space. Okay. We, we had plenty of space. Yeah. Okay, we space. Go. So, so you are in law enforcement. Yeah. How, 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 how do you like being in law enforcement? And, and, and where I'm coming at with that is, in my opinion, 
knowing your jurisdiction that you're in charge of, yeah. I feel like you are fighting crime in the lowest crime area yeah. within like 50 miles. It's, it's, it's like a gra- that, is yeah. it just a breeze? It's a gravy job. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It, I will say, I, I mean, say. I, I won't tell you who I work for or where I work, but right. where that is, you're right, is low crime. Uh, but we have our days, right. you know, so... I'll leave it at that. I, but. I, I would bet that there's there is less crime, but the crime that there is is probably like it's it's like where, where we're talking about. It's it's less of like the, it's like the the little petty like the 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 break ins and the, well actually it's probably a lot of break ins, but it's less of like the the robberies and the the gunshots and that kind of thing, and more of like the tax fraud. I will tell you that <laughs> that most of the time it's shoplifters at Walmart, pretty insignificant things. <laughs> So, so Cody's now coming back because he had to go fix, uh, put his cat outside who was coming under the door and meowing. And, um, maybe, maybe we're going to catch some of that audio, um, in the, in the final cut. But David, you say you have a story about Cody's cat. I do. So I've known Cody for what? 15, yep. 17 years, Too long. something like that. That's right. Uh, your cat Penny. Yep. Has been around for as long as I can remember. Yeah. Phenomenal I mean, cat. Lo- yeah. I, I don't not like cats. Cat person. Let me say that. I don't like cats, yeah. but it's a great cat. Never owned a cat growing up. Not a cat guy. I owned cats all growing up, and I that because of that, I'm not a cat person. Yeah, yeah. but but okay. I like it because I like Penny because she's more like a dog. She really is. Yeah. So, I know everybody says that about their animal. Yeah. Like, But she really is. Well, yeah. anyway, the story I have. So, you know, I come to, to Cody's pretty often, and we were over here, what, several months ago. In the backyard, and your neighbor, who I don't know, couldn't even tell you their oh, name. Yes. So it's not like you know we're buddies or anything. Was holding a cat, and I said, "Oh, that's Penny." And what's your neighbor's name? Mike. Mike. Yeah. It, it was a great guy. guy. It was a. I think his wife. Oh, Mike and Susie. Susie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Susie was like, kind of looked at me strange and was confused. And I said, "That Penny," and she's like, "No, this is this is not Penny." And I said, "I mean, I I thought she was kidding. I was like, no." This, that's that's Penny. Yeah, you know, I, I was very adamant that was Penny. Well, it turns out it wasn't Penny. Your neighbor, I guess, has a cat looks like Penny. Yeah, it's like uh, you know in SpongeBob where it's like you've got Gary, and then there's like the what's the evil Gary? You know what I'm talking about? Am I the only person in the room that gets this? No, Josh knows. I'm upset that I don't know. Yeah, yeah. No, like, I thought you were for sure would know. I f- I would think most yeah. days that I would know. Yeah. There's like the the evil no, version yeah. of Gary that has like the big eyebrows. Yeah. I don't. I, don't yep. I wasn't a huge, huge eyebrows guy, Gary. but that's just like what I remember about it. Absolutely, it's like the fluffier, more evil version of Penny. Right, yeah. but it was close enough for me to argue very politely with your neighbor about it. Right, you're like, no, this is not your cat. And I think at some point I just said, you know what, it's not worth it, and I just walked away. But. I was convinced it was Penny. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 100%. Susie texted us, and she was like, I think your uh, friend is trying to steal our cat. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I haven't seen her since. Hope she's doing well. She's doing great. Yeah. So, hey, honest mistake, though. Honest yeah, mistake. Yeah. I, At no least heart. it wasn't like, you Larry, know. Larry. 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 Let's Larry, go. Larry, 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 Larry. Yeah, Gary, Larry. That's yeah. awesome. Thank yeah. you, Josh. Good. Thanks for the research. <laughs> Um, but, but you know what, the honest mistake there, at least it wasn't like you saw some three-year-old blonde haired kid and we're like, that's Cody's child Solomon. Yeah. That would wasn't. be different. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Stealing a child would be way worse. Yeah. yeah absolutely. It could have been a lot worse. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that is a, that is a, a good segue though, because I would say that's a very, um, dad moment or, or dumb moment or whatever you want to call it. Dumb. So we, and we can come back to you if you have a, a separate story to share, but let's, let's do dad moment, uh, of the, of the month, Cody. All right, we'll start with you, Jay. Okay, mine's not really a dad moment either. It doesn't involve my kids. It okay. was just me being an idiot. Okay. Um, <laughs> so the, um, the dad and the dad moment, actually. Yes, yeah, but yeah. it's but it's. I, I feel like it's. I think I feel like it's just very like it's just a very like just dumb older adult guy thing to do or something. Okay. I don't, I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe maybe I'm way off here. But I was on a airplane recently. I travel for work sometimes. And, you know, the airlines right now are very strict, like, mask policy, right? right? So, you, you, you know, you'd be wearing your mask all the time in the airport. Um, you know, they remind you all the time, just along with the, the same, like, safety speech that they give. There's sure. also a lot of, like, mask policy stuff that they tell you, like, we, you know, you're welcome to have food and beverages, but you need to, like, mask down, bite, and then while you're chewing, mask up. Like, they, like, they tell you all that, right? To be fair, if you got on a plane sounding like you sound right now. Yes. Kind of stopped <laughs> we up. I would probably want you to mask up as well. Again, again the allergies, but yeah. anyways, 
Um, and then depending on the airline, they're either if, if you like don't abide by that policy, they're either going to like remind you gently that you need to like abide by the mask policy or they're going to punch you in the face. I don't know. It depends, right, on, the, depends right. on the airline. Um, kick you off the plane, whatever. Spirit airline will but punch you But for me, in the face. so obviously I respect the policy, so I'm wearing my mask. Um, and <laughs> so beverage cart comes around. I decide I'm just going to get ice water. So I get our ice water. And, you know, I'm going ma- mask down, sip. You know, mask up, mask down, sip, mask up. Um, and I, I, there's this one time where I go mask down, take a sip, Straight down the windpipe. Now I'm oh, no. hacking coughing oh, on the no. pl- with the mask down, just hacking coughing. It's like there's, and, and so of course it's like on the plane, there's it's like silent, and so there's me hack coughing, and people are looking at me, and I'm not wearing a mask. So now they're like, okay, of all, of all the times, oh, uh, you're screwed. Yeah. So I was just being very judged. You on hear? The plane you hear? Sure. Beep boop. Uh, yeah. We're doing an emergency <laughs> landing. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> uh, exactly. So, anyways, uh. just me being an idiot. So the dad moment for me is really an honest mistake as well. Um, and so, okay. So Aspen one day a week, she, she works and she has to be there at 6 AM. So she'll lay out our daughter's clothes, our kids clothes, and I'll take them to school, do all that. Well, she'll lay out the shoes, the whole female outfit. And this particular outfit, you know, some, especially with like toddlers, one-year-olds, you're going to get some outfits. You're like, Oh, I'm, this is not like a normal outfit that I would ever wear or that an adult female would ever wear. So I'm just going to roll it, put the outfit on, send, send her to school. I get a call from Aspen later that day when she sees a picture of our daughter at school. And she was like, why did you never put her bow in her hair? I'm like, what are you talking about? She had clipped the bow to the collar of the shirt. I thought it was like sewn on as part of the shirt. <laughs> send, send her to school. <laughs> She puts the bow on there to basically say, like, like here's her clothes this. and here's the bow that goes with this outfit. This is, like, part of the outfit. I'm going to attach oh, it so you don't good. lose it. That's good. And I was like, oh, this is, like, part of the shirt. Let's throw this thing on center on our way. And yep. I just uh, I had to go. Uh, I had to face Cindy later that day, her teacher, and Ooh. just was humiliated. Uh, th- that's an honest, honest mistake. mistake. I can honest relate to that. Yeah. Dude, with kids' clothing is ridiculous. I've put clothes on backwards. I've left oh. out articles. I've put bows on shirts. I just... I'm doing Why, the best I can. The the whole like button up thing for the outfit and that's and that being on the back is ridiculous to me. Yeah, but no, kids' clothes is ridiculous. And you know, David, newborn. Well, well I was gonna say, I I feel like the the dad moments don't stick out because every moment is a dad moment right now. Right, you're in the learning. I'm, phase. I'm so new to this. Yeah. You know, it's getting real deep on us there. With Here that. we go. The only thing that comes to mind that I just I I, I know I messed up this past little while was. You know, my little girl has started to roll over onto her, her belly. Okay. And that's new to us and, and to her. And um, she doesn't know how to, how to roll back from yeah. her belly to her back. Right. It's harder to do that. You know, and so we're trying to, like, teach her that, which obviously she doesn't like, understand words or anything. And so, so you're, just, like, rolling her. Yeah. yeah. Just trying to help her out. Sure. Well, we have this little mat for her, and um, that's where she does most of her rolling. And um, we, we put her down there one day, and she rolled over and just got frustrated. Like she couldn't get back over. And so I was trying to help her over. Well, I think I pushed a little too hard and the momentum caught and she just rolled back onto her back and okay. then caught her head as well. Uh Oh, and it was one of those, yeah. like one of her first actually kind of pauses. Like, am I hurt? Yeah. Right. You yeah. know, kind of looked at me like, am I hurt? A I little, need confirmation. A little, yeah. a little yeah. shock. Yeah. And yeah. of course she wasn't hurt, but in her little mind she was. And that was, that was a, a dad moment. <clears throat> that was good. In the way of, of, of hurting me a little bit. Yeah. yeah you yeah. know? Yeah. Uh, Cause she, she doesn't understand. Right. You know, mm, dang. but yeah. And it feels you, you, you do, you have a lot of, there's a lot of instances through parenthood where there is some, like, there's just guilt. A little bit like like if you're if your kid gets hurt you feel like maybe you could have prevented it by like being a little bit more careful or like something like that you, it's like there's just a lot of instances that could happen that and from the outside looking in you're like oh like you know you need to let kids make their own mistakes like the trial and error aspect of learning but also i'm just like oh man i just feel so bad right now you know what i mean yeah well yeah, of, co- of course you never see your wife making those mistakes your right, wife, that's a great point <laughs> yeah, yeah. Your, your wife yeah, is just there's a lot of it's like why me yeah, yeah. it's always me yeah. Yeah. yeah i think i think god just set it up for from the men to yeah. teach the hard lessons that's right yeah. to both parties your kid and you right which brings us to our <laughs> next segment right crap beer of the month <laughs> 
Okay. Let's do that. Let's let's, get, let's, let's open dive it. right in. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna let you narrate this again, um, because I'm gonna go ahead and open it up. Okay. What what are we what are we drinking today? So so we're gonna start off um, with a crowd favorite that I had never had before, and when I say crowd favorite, I mean Cindy's pick. Okay. Which is really all that matters. There needs to be. I, I know that. Cindy's I know you're saying that. That I know that you're saying that as like Cindy just recommended that this today. Right. But uh, but there are, there needs to be a Cindy pick of the week. Cindy pick of the week. Yeah. If we don't get Cindy on this podcast, hey, today, how about this? You, I, you need to, you need to talk a little bit about about Cindy going off today. Okay. All right. She kind of she. Yes. <laughs> All right. So before we get in before we get into the the Cindy's pick of the week, we went and visited Cindy today at the pig, and I don't know if anybody has um, heard any of the hype going around the Happy Dad Seltzer. But they were supposed to come to the Bluff Park Piggly Wiggly for like this big like grand reveal of their new product. Um, the Bluff Park dads were going to be there as part of it. All this stuff. <clears throat> Who is this again? The the Belk Boys or something? The, the Nelk Boys. Oh, yeah. Okay. So they came out with this. Not the thing. not the store Belk. Not the store Belk. Okay. The the Nelk Boys, uh, I believe, from Canada. Um, and so they were going to come. Cindy was setting it all up. And, you know, to get them to come, they were going to move it from the Mountain Brook location to the Bluff Park new location. Um, and part of that agreement was you buy 50 cases of their product. They come and we're going to meet them there, do a whole like thing. Um, right before. The kickoff thing. A little kickoff. Yeah. Yeah. A little grand reveal of their product. Well, right before they upped it to 100 cases and said. They like, they, they. Okay, they like they they up the ante. They up the ante. They said, okay. "Hey, you want us to come? A hundred cases." And Cindy was like, "Oh, I'm not feeling good about that." But you know what? It's honestly good business. Great business for them. Yeah, yeah. Or, or they, for at, it seemed like it at the time. It seemed like it. Yeah. So, but the thing about Cindy is she's not a sucker. No, she's not. No, she's not. <laughs> she's not a sucker. And so she she was like, "I'm not doing that." Y'all go to the Mountain Brook location. Well, they tried to pitch it to the Mountain Brook location. They weren't having it. Like they were just like zero cases. Well, hold on, ah. help, me, help me out here with some details, David, because you were there too, and I feel like it somehow got up to two hundred cases. I think what happened is the Nelk, Nelk, yeah. in okay, Nelk brothers were trying to pit the two stores. First of all, I think they're just the Nelk boys, not the brothers. Oh, boys, whatever they are. Yeah, yeah. I think they were trying to pit the two stores, Mountain Brook and, and Bluff Park. Right. And so they basically Josh is crying. They were going back and forth between two stores trying to up the cases. And then finally, I think first Mountain Brook called the bluff. It's like, now we're out. We're done. Yeah. And so they're like, okay, last ditch. We'll go back to, to bluff park. And was like, here's the final offer. And, and Cindy was like, nah. Yeah. They, yeah. They, they backtracked. So they were like, we want 200 cases. And then, um, Mountain Brook was like, <laughs> Cindy said, I'll give you 15. Cindy said, I'll give you 15. <laughs> And they said no, and she said, "All right, we'll see you later." I love that. And called it off all I together. I respect the heck out of that. Which, man. yeah, just shout out to Cindy for just being true to yourself. Absolutely, love that. All right, so Cindy pick of the week. Uh, we have got the Yellowhammer Groovy Dawn's West Coast IPA. I think what we try every time we do this needs to be. We just need to call it the Cindy pick of the week. Like that needs to be the name of the segment, probably. Yeah, I think that could start something at, at the pig too. Yeah. I, I was also there today, by the way, saw Cindy. Um, I was getting all of my uh, chili ingredients for the chili cook-off. Yeah, I was going to say, while, while, while Cody is pouring this, talk us through that. Like, I what? can. Yeah, yeah. We do, I'll do a little plug for that. So tomorrow um, at the Brookwood Mall is, and, and by the way, I guess everybody that listens to this is going to be like a lot, way past the actual <laughs> yeah. event, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> Just but, tell them it was great. But no, like, at least you can understand uh, what, what we're doing and what's going on in the, in the community, and they do this every year in March, so... If you love it, you could do it next, next year. Um, but the, the Exceptional Foundation is a, an incredible um, nonprofit organization that's centered in Homewood that does uh, uh, provide services for people of all ages, children through adults that have physical and mental disabilities, uh, provide services for them. So a wonderful organization. And the Chili Cook-Off they do every year is their biggest fundraiser they do of all the, of all the types of you know fundraising events they, they put on it every year. So... Um, about 150 chilies you can go and try. I think it's $15 to enter. Um, and again, they do it every March. So obviously the, the folks that are uh, listening to this podcast, the, the event is over. Sorry. So but they well, do it every year in March. Year, yeah. Well, Cindy was, was talking us through what all you bought because apparently it was a lot. It was. It was. I, I bought a lot. We, we got to make 10 gallons of... Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Stand by. Oh, Cody, Cody is having an issue. This, are, are getting this, but that, that might have been the worst pour I've ever seen. That's bad. All right, 
First of all, if you've ever tried to pour one from this little handle, it's near impossible because that thing's so heavy. Right. So, in my defense, that's near impossible. That's you hilarious. have two hands. Somebody used to pour beers for a living. That was hard to watch. It's true. <laughs> well. All right. Here. Give me another glass. I'm going to do my There you go. Here. Hold the glass. Sure. All right. Thank you. Ooh. That was a good sound. Thank you. That's good. It's good for me. Thank you. Appreciate it. There you go. A great pour. Um, David, let me ask you another question. Have you been on your wife's podcast yet? I have not. Wow. That's awesome. You've been but, saying you're going to be on our podcast before that? Yeah. Well, don't put him on blast. That says a lot. No, that's fine. I, no, I'm just kidding. I, I've not been invited. However, okay. I would not do well at that. It, it's much more academic. Then okay, <laughs> then this. Let's put it okay. mildly. Okay. All right. They, let's they, pour your beer. They yeah. <laughs> they do a lot of research. They do a lot of uh, prep. Okay. What are we drinking? All right. So we're drinking the Yellowhammer Groovy Dawn's West Coast IPA. Okay. Cindy's pick of the week. Okay. Cindy really hyped this one up. She hyped it up. She said she's not a huge IPA girl. Um, she likes some maltier stuff, but she said of the IPAs, this would be your pick. Okay. And I and I agree. Thoughts? It's a good. Good classic IPA. Um, I haven't, I don't do IPAs that much anymore. It's right. just very heavy. And well, and we talked about that on the last episode, yeah. actually. Yeah, but it's great. It's good. Yeah, it's good for one beer. Yep. Uh, and that's really all we need out of it. Dave, thoughts? <laughs> I actually don't have the beer. So I, I, don't, I don't know. I'm just kidding. We can cut that. <laughs> yeah. The color's uh, great. Though. I forgot you didn't have one. I forgot you were drinking something else. <laughs> the color's great. It looks nice. Yeah. They, yeah. Just reject, rejected our beer option for. for well, uh, I'll be honest. Um, the reason that is, is Cody has a, a growler, right. right? A glass growler, which I think is probably the, the safer bet as far as sanitation goes, other than like, I don't know, reusing plastic or something. But if you know me, you oh, know that I'm, I'm kind of a germaphobe. Oh, mm. And I feel like anytime you put beer into any, I mean, that's a fermented liquid already Yep. into a container. You're just asking for bacteria and mold. A glass growler is not for a germaphobe. Right. Not uh, at all. Have you seen the cap of a growler? Yeah. Well, we, uh, yes. We did. We did get a brand new cap today. You're with me. Doesn't uh, matter. Have you seen it after a couple of days? That's what I'm saying. This one's brand new though. But, but to your point, you did get something different. You got your own, you got a, you got the Goat Island Goatopia New England style IPA. I believe you. I was wondering why, too, why when we were pouring that beer, Dave was like, no, nah, I'm good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, it, and now I realize you, you are that, it's that, it's that bad. You're that much of a germaphobe. You're oh, like, I'm yeah. not going to drink beer out of that growler. Yeah, it, it's, yeah, I can bypass that. Not, you know, give yeah. some water or something. Yeah. Wow. What well, do you think so, of it? So I think it's great. I, I like West Coast IPAs in general more than like New England IPAs yeah. or something like that. I just like the citrusy IPAs. You know, I really, we've talked about this. I really just like one and then I'm done with it. Um, and it's doing the trick. Yeah, that's what I need. Awesome. What do you think about the New England IPA? The Goat Island Goatopia? It's bitter. Bitter? Yeah. And I like bitter. Okay. And you know, and you know they have the IBU or whatever. Have yeah. you ever seen that, heard about that? Uh, International that Bitterness, bitterness? Unit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. International Bitterness Unit. Yeah, I, I've heard of that. Um, I have no idea what the, the ranking is or the number. It's just a, it's like a rel relative scale. Zero yeah. to 100, I think. Okay. Of how bitter your 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 beverage is. Yeah, and I think Cindy was saying New England or like East Coast is more bitter than than West Coast, whereas West, West Coast is more what you say, uh, uh, citrus based, right? Or floral maybe, right? Um, so yeah. And she said she doesn't typically like pineier flavors, Ooh, okay. um, but she doesn't in gin, and so that's an interesting take. So, but I feel like gin is kind of piney, right? right? Just the nature of what that it is. is what gin right. is. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. All right, so Dave, why are you here? You're here because you just released a brand new book. I'm pumped about that, by the way. Well, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, that's. I mean, I feel like that takes a lot of work, right? It took about four years. That's that's crazy, man. To yeah. be devoted for four for four years of something that like like how many times through four years do you do you think like this may not ever come to fruition? Uh, I, I think. Or were you pretty like optimistic about it the whole way? I think the writing came somewhat easy like i think i'm naturally just more of that side of my brain works like i can't do math at all back and write right uh so that part came easy I, I think the the times where i'm like this just won't work or this is trash or, or whatever came from the 
just multiple edits. You know, like okay. getting getting something that I felt like was a good starting point. The tedious things. Printing it at FedEx, you know, just on regular white paper. Right. And and reading it with a, a red pen. Like doing that fifteen times. Right. At, at some point you're like, Okay, this this is what I got. Right. You know, but in between that from Was it ever though was it ever though once you got it to where you're like, I think this is this is it? Do does there then is there then like a like a consultant or something, like a professional editor that also tells you like I agree with you? Uh, my wife, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Dave's lucky. His wife is an in-house editor. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I didn't so that. yeah, Hannah actually does that on the side. She oh, uh, okay. she edits anything from an article to a, a complete book. She actually just finished another, not mine, a, another complete book. Um, and so she has a gift for that, you know, of, yeah. of reading and making things a little more concise and clear and interesting. And so. Did you let her in on the on that process like throughout, or was it like I'm going to do this? My this is my project, and then at the end you gave it to her. No, so uh, at our old house, not not in Bluff Park, we actually had a little home office that had a TV above my desk, and so I would just kind of throw the the screen up there, and we would literally line by line just read and then okay we'll change this or that oh that's awesome yeah so, that's cool and that's, that's time cool. spent with her too it's like oh of course yeah. Awesome. yeah yeah and i bet i mean that's it's such a tedious thing so i very very thankful that she you know a has the gift and b would be willing to to share it with me well yeah, and so. the, the cool thing about this book too is it's not like fiction it's this is like your life story too like this is a part of of your journey through life and so doing that with her it's not like some off the wall project it's like getting to know each other better too yeah of course and and a lot of of gap year actually um was right before hannah and i met and so it it kind of gave a a backstory as to uh why i lived in ukraine and and kind of my heart behind that but uh but yeah it was it was a fun time you know good family time i guess you could say um but it really started uh when i moved to ukraine i had uh these, these journals that I would just kind of make, make some notes in every day. And, um, you know, my, my plan was when I moved back to America, which that was a a question as to when I would do that. But whenever that time came, I was going to on the plane home, just read those journals. And the time came, I was on the plane and, uh, had the journals in front of me and I just couldn't do it. I was like, uh, for whatever reason, I'm just not ready for this. And so I actually shelved them for, for years and uh, at, at some random time, just kind of got the urge to get them out. And I, I literally, to read them, to like really connect with it, I just would type the journal back into a Word document. Uh, and that was kind of what started Gap Year. Very nice. So the, 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 the book is not my journal. Yeah, so, so leading into that, give us the brief uh, kind of summary of what the book's about. Actually, can you just tell me what a Gap Year is, period? Is yeah, about? so my idea of a Gap Year uh, and the way I did it personally was... Uh, just a, a dedicated part of my life that kind of put everything else on hold, you know, at that time, my education, friends, whatever. Um, and just chose something to, to kind of pursue for, uh, an, I don't know, just, a, a an unended amount of time. I, I didn't, I didn't go out and say, okay, I'm going to spend this much time in Ukraine. Uh, but I just said, I'm gonna buy one way ticket. I'm going to move there. And then whenever the time's up, I'll, I'll, I'll know it, you know? And so, oh, okay. So you don't even, you, you didn't invest in a year. You I spent in, nine months there. Okay. But I'm just saying you, you, you weren't saying I'm going for X number of days. No. You no. said I'm going. Yep. That's incredible by the way. Yeah. That's yeah. Awesome. So I it, would never be able to do that. Well, as I get older, it, it, it seems a little more questionable. <laughs> <laughs> when I did it, I was 17, you know, um, yeah. I'm 31 now. So, uh, you know, when my idea of a gap year though, and, and what a, a portion of the book is about really is trying to encourage other 17 year olds, uh, especially, and maybe even older than that to say, look, dedicate some amount of time to do something, you know, something out of the, the norm. Um, and if that's nine months, if that's a year or in, in some of my friends cases, 15 years, you know, I guess you could say it's not really a gap year at that point, but, um, commit your, yourself to, to something just kind of out outside out there. yourself. Yeah. And I'll tell you, I mean, from, from someone who did that, uh, at such a, a young age, uh, it really did shape the way I see the world and the way I see people. And, um, it now through gap year, even for myself, um, even if no one ever bought a copy, it's, it's something to, to read back and kind of be reminded of, 
of certain things in my life and kind of what they taught me. So, so you, your gap year was spent in Ukraine. Yeah. Very Lugansk. relevant right now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. A lot of stuff in the news. Um, not, not very good stuff going on over there. Yeah. What, how was Ukraine as a, as a, as a place for you? So also, uh, also another, another side bit to that too, though, before you go is, is, you know, the, going through school here in Birmingham, right. there were a number of students that, you know, just showed up one year at school, like new kids at school. And like they had been adopted from the Ukraine or they were uh, temporarily here from the Ukraine. And, and I think it's like uh, talking to them and learning about it. It seems like it was it really rough over there. Right. Well, and, and yeah, and I was going to ask too, like what drew you to take that time to go specifically to you? Yeah. What, yeah. Why did you choose other, that? other spots? Yeah. So I, I talk about it in the book a little bit, but um, my first draw to Ukraine was just kind of, I would say random. I, I guess God wouldn't say random, but um, some of the kids you're talking about, some of the Ukrainian orphans at that point actually uh, were in Birmingham for a summer uh, for like a, a partnership they had with a family that lives in town. And I was really close to that family at the time and just spent a lot of time at their house, got to interact with these Ukrainian orphans. And for whatever reason, just kind of fell in love with that part of the world and those people. And so um, through all of that, uh, got connected with another family that lived, an American family that lived in Ukraine. Um, and I, I talk about it in the, one of the first chapters in the book, but I basically had dinner with, with them. They just happened to be in Birmingham like soon after I had this conversation and be like, you know, kind of my heart's turning towards Ukraine a little bit. I don't know wh why or what that means. And the family's like, well, Hey, there, there's a family that lives in Ukraine. That's going to be in town. Why don't we have dinner? And I'll, you know, the book goes into more detail about it, but basically the, the way the dinner went was the family knew I was going to ask them for me to live with them. And I didn't know that originally. Um, so I'm just dancing around the question, you know, I'm 17 years old. I'm in high school. And, uh, Finally, I get to the the point where I'm just like kind of blurred out, like, can I live with you? And, you know, that that was not a question that surprised them. And they they basically just said, yeah, just pack your bags and let me know when you're coming. Like and so we, I, I moved into a, a really small like dirt road village out in eastern Ukraine. Uh, Lugansk is the city, uh, which is unfortunately now controlled by uh, by Russia. Um but yeah, it was, I mean, out in the middle of nowhere, it, it's, it's like I said, our dirt road, uh, village, like in the winter, there's no running water. Um, just really tough way of life over there. Um, a lot of people live in the village are older people that are from the Soviet times. And so, uh, they, they it's just, like I said, it's, it's a rough part of Ukraine. It's a rough part of the world. Uh, a lot of really just broken people. And so, um, yeah, I just made home there and uh, for for nine months, just kind of dug into especially orphans uh, that lived in Ukraine. So uh, th there's there's several stories that, that vary from, you know, my time in that village to uh, a, a lot of different people that I encountered in Ukraine. This will give a story of, um, of hope, but also just like, that I feel like there's a lot of pressure when you're that age to feel like you have to do X, Y, and Z. And it, it feel, I feel like this is just going to open up other options for, for kids take up, you know, kind of diffuse some pressure from what they're expected to do and let them know that there's hope learned and other paths that they can take to, um, to experience life in different ways. Yeah. And, and not only pressure to, to do the you know right thing or, or whatever, but also in my case, the opposite. There was pressure from, especially from our school. We went to the same high school. I mean, yeah. this, the school administration to, you know, say, I think you're kidding about that. Like that, that's a wild idea. And in my case, you know, we had this long piece of butcher paper that all the kids, all the seniors would write like their name and kind of either the school they're going to or the military or whatever their, their next step in life was. Yeah. And, you know, I, I would put Ukraine. And I think three or four times that got taken down, which I later learned by our school administration because they were just thinking I was kidding or like just trying to, I don't know, cause a, a, a stir at the school for some reason. Yeah. And, you know, g going back to like someone like your brother who's young and maybe trying to figure it out a little bit, just to know that like, there's going to be people in your way, like, especially with bold ideas that are going to say either you're kidding or I don't take you seriously or you can't do it. 
Um, and so again, I, I hope that for people who read gap year, they read my experience in that and say, you know what? I don't care what my school principal says or my other friend says, like they don't believe me. I'm just going to prove them wrong. You know, I'm yeah. going to take a step and hopefully a wise one, hopefully an informed one, but, sure. um, take a step out there and say, I'm just going to commit myself to this, whether it's good, bad or ugly. And you know, when, it, when the time to come home is, uh, I'll know it and I'll come home. Um, but yeah, I would tell your brother, you know, I, I know your brother, yeah. uh, I would tell him if he's thinking about something like this or even something, uh, different, that's just kind of out there, like go for it. Like you're 17, 18 years old. I know when I was 17, 18 years old, I thought that was like the end of the world. But looking back now, it's like, man, you're so young, <laughs> you know, like oh, you, yeah. you have so much life ahead of you. Just do something crazy. Just step out there and, and trust that, uh, that, you'll make it through. <laughs> well, and the reality is there's so many kids out there that just go to college by default. They have no clue what they want to do. And they'll, do, they'll have no clue for four years and they'll go through college still not knowing. And they'll get on the other side with a bunch of debt and a degree and they still have no idea. And so I think just taking a breather, take like you're giving yourself a gap in any capacity, whether it be school or just whatever it is in life can sometimes give you clarity in general, right? You're, yep. you're separating yourself from the situation in a way that can, you can sometimes see things better from a higher point of view. So absolutely. I, I just think that's just really valuable. Yeah. And I'm, I'm not saying don't go to college, right. don't get a job that there's a time and place for that. I went to college. I have a job. Like I'm not saying just go out there and be a bum, <laughs> you know, sure, totally. um, that not saying that you're a bum if you don't go to college. Absolutely not. not I know some really great people who never went to college that are yeah. way more successful Same. than me. Um, but yeah, it, I'm, I'm not saying it's, it's one or the other, right. you know, you can do a gap year and go to college if that's what you want. Yeah. Um, and I saw someone tweet the other day that that gap years are, are wasted on, on the youth, you know, people who like my, my age, you know, when I took my gap year, I thought it was kind of funny. I think, I think it was kind of tongue in cheek. They were saying that, but I do kind of buy into the fact that, you know, like I said earlier, I'm 31 now. Is there another gap year? You know, is there something else in my life that I can just say, you know what, I'm, this is either the start of a new beginning or this is just something that I'm going to learn from just like I learned in my, my first gap year. Mm. So I don't, I don't think you're ever too old to do that. Like so people, for people that are listening, if they want to check out your book, where can they find it? It's yeah. a great cover too, by the way. Hold it, hold it up. So this is actually not, this is, it says not for resale. This is actually my, uh, the last copy I had for my final edits. Um, I think Cody, you have, yeah, I've got, I've got the, the Amazon copy. It, it looks the same. Um, but yeah, you can go to Amazon, uh, just type in David Presley gap year. Uh, you'll see it. There's a Kindle version and there's a, obviously a paperback version. Um, it's self-published. It's, it's, you're not going to find it in Barnes and Noble or something like that. Um, but yeah, it, uh, this, it may be too late once this podcast comes out, but for the first two weeks, uh, all of the sales are going directly to a, a war fund. Uh, some friends of mine who live in Ukraine still, uh, have set up to help at risk people in Ukraine. Nice. Um, that's anyone from the deaf people in Ukraine to orphans, to people that just need gas to leave Ukraine during the war. Yeah. Um, so all of the money's going to that, uh, at least for the first two weeks I've committed to that. And then, um, my hope is after that, that I can continue to help support them in some way. So, um, if nothing else, if you want to buy the book and, and support them, that that's great. Well, I'm excited to read it. I got it in late last night, actually. Uh, and so thank you so much for just talking through it with us. We're excited to, to check it out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you all for, for letting me come on and talk about it. I appreciate Absolutely. it. Of course. Thanks for coming. All right. Well, I guess that, uh, I guess that wraps it up, Cody. Yeah, episode um, two in the books. Episode two in the books. Uh, thank you all for listening. And uh, we'll, we'll see you next month. Catch you next time. Hey, let us know what you want to hear on the Bluff Park Dad Pod.